Hello guys, got a video here for you today on the BSA R10 and in this one what we're going to be doing is making a shroud for the rifle. In the last few videos you've seen the rifle with just the steel skinny barrel on it and we're going to be covering that up with a nice carbon fiber shroud. We're going to be doing a fairly simple shroud for this rifle. The main goal of the shroud isn't to make it super quiet, mainly to cover up the barrel and just make the rifle look a little more presentable. The first part we're going to be making is the end cap for the shroud and this needs a half inch UNF on it and a boss on the back to fit into the carbon fibre tube. We're going to be turning the half inch UNF on the end first so we've faced the material and then we're turning the diameter down to 12.7 millimetres. Once the back face has been finished we can turn a little undercut for the thread to run into then finish it off by 45 in the end. Next up we can cut the thread so we're single point cutting the thread on the end of this using a full form insert and just taking the passes nice and gently. As we cut the thread we're just using a little bit of WD-40 to stop the aluminium from sticking to the tool. Once we've done a few passes we're checking the thread with a thread gauge. This is a half inch UNF go gauge so as soon as the gauge screws on nice and snugly we know the thread's been cut to the correct depth. So taking it one pass at a time and then as you see there the thread gauge screws on nice and freely but there's not excessive amounts of play between the gauge and the thread itself. You could also check the thread with a moderator but I always cut my half inch UNFs using the go gauge. Once that's been done we can take that part out of the lathe and then fit into the chuck our half inch UNF female mandrel. This is a homemade jig and just allows us to screw anything with a half inch UNF into it and hold it securely. It's much nicer than holding the part by the threads that you just cut. But once the mandrel has been indicated in, we can screw our part into it and then start turning the external features of it. First thing we'll do is take the OD down to 23mm and that's the OD of the carbon that we're going to be using for this shroud. We are going to be making two parts in this setup. The first being the end cap for the shroud with a half inch UNF on it obviously. And the second part will be the front shroud support. This will screw onto the half inch UNF of the barrel and have O-rings on the OD that will locate the carbon fibre tube and keep it central to the barrel. You'll see what I mean when we actually put it all together. The two parts that you see in here are going to be turned down to a nice tight fit in the carbon tube. The front cap is obviously going to be glued into the carbon fibre, so this needs to be a nice tight fit in it. And the front shroud support will turn again later for a nice clearance fit in the carbon. Once we've got the carbon fit in nicely, we're going to be drilling out the back to 11.5mm and then threading it half inch UNF. Finishing it off with a chamfer, then parting the front shroud support off. We'll finish this part off at a later date, although once that's been parted off we can finish off turning the front cap. The first thing we'll do is drill it out to 6mm and this will be the hole in the end of the shroud. This shroud's obviously for a 177 rifle which is 4.5mm so a 6mm hole in the end gives it a good amount of clearance and ensures that there'll be no clipping. After that we can bore out the waste material from inside the end cap. This will just lighten the device down a little and provide a little extra volume inside the shroud. Once the end cap was bored out to size, we shortened it down a little, took a little more waste material off, then finished off the external features, which include the glue rings. These are turned rings on the end cap that just hold a little extra glue and prevent the end from blowing out under pressure. Finishing this side off with just a quick debar, then we can remove the part from the mandrel, flip it in the three-jaw chuck, and just countersink the other side. And there you can see the finished component. We'll glue that into the shroud a little later. Next up we're finishing off the front shroud support and to do that we're holding it on a male half inch UNF mandrel. Similar to the female one we showed although this one is a male. But we face the end, chamfer each side then turn the OD to a nice clearance fit inside the carbon tube. Once that's done we can start turning the o-ring grooves and they'll ensure that the carbon fibre tube stays nice and central to the barrel. The o-rings that we're going to be using for this are 1.5mm thick and I'm just checking the fit with the carbon fibre tube. The goal is to make it a nice tight fit but one that's easily removable. But once we've got the fit we're looking for we can move the part over to the mill and start drilling the through holes. There are going to be 24 through holes in this part and they allow air back through the shroud. The distance between the barrel and the carbon fibre tube is fairly thin and we've also got o-ring grooves to worry about so we're going to be using a nice small drill bit 1.2 millimeters and we're going to put a lot of holes in the device. 
In the video here we just show spot drilling the holes first and then the starting of the drilling. I didn't bother showing all the drilling as it's quite a long winded process but I've got the parts set up in the mill and we're just using the DRO to accurately locate the holes. The DRO that I'm using has a PCD function so once you find the centre of the part you can just specify the PCD diameter and also the number of holes that you want. Once it's all set up in the menu all you do is drill the first hole Push next on the DRO and it tells you your exact X and Y movement in order to get to the next hole. A fairly long winded process but it does leave you with quite a nice result. The last part we have to make is the back boss for the shroud. First thing we're going to do is turn the end for a nice close fit inside the carbon. Not a tight fit as this end is going to have an o-ring around it. Next up we're drilling and boring the middle for a nice close fit on the barrel. The barrel itself is 15.5mm in diameter, so we're aiming for 1555 That gives a little bit of clearance, but it also ensures that the part itself is a nice close fit on the barrel. Once that's done, we can chamfer the end and cut the o-ring groove. Similar to the front support on the shroud, this o-ring groove is a nice tight fit in the carbon, and the o-ring just makes it nicer to install and stops the carbon fibre from rattling. Next up we can flip the part in the lathe and turn the 23mm OD to match the carbon fibre. Then we can just deburr the edges, put in a nice chamfer and everything and get it over to the mill. This is the final setup for the part and what we have to do is mill a slot in the side of the device to match the magazine release that's fitted to the R10. We've just got the part set up on some parallels and we're just slowly milling the slot. This isn't an ideal setup for this part. I would have liked to put it in a V-block, but I didn't have a V-block short enough to clamp the part. So we're having to use parallels on this occasion. However, a V-block would have been a more secure setup. The final thing to do on this part is to drill and tap the two securing grub screws that are going to be used to secure the back boss to the barrel itself and also the carbon fibre to the back boss. We're going to be doing a similar setup to the day states in which the carbon fibre tube is secured to the back boss using a grub screw. You'll see exactly what I mean when we actually fit the shroud to the barrel. The very last thing that we've got to do is cut the carbon fibre to length and we're just using a cut off wheel to get it cut down. If you use lathe tools what normally happens is the carbon fibre tube splinters on the inside. Using a cut off wheel like we're doing here creates a nice clean cut and doesn't allow the carbon fibre to bust through on the inside. But that's about done for the making of. What I'll do is I'll get all the parts anodized and then bring you over to the bench and we'll get the shroud fitted to the rifle. So that was how we made the components for the shroud. What we'll do now is we'll go ahead and fit it to the rifle. Before we do that though, I'll just give you a very quick close up of the parts. So this part here threads onto the half inch UNF of the barrel and acts as the front shroud support. The holes around the outside allow air back through the shroud and help quieten the rifle down. This part here is the back piece and this cutout aligns with the magazine's release catch as we said earlier and the two grub screws secure it to the barrel. The back one secures this part here to the barrel and then the front one here secures the carbon to this piece here. There are other ways of fitting shrouds and such but this one was nice and easy to do for this rifle. The last part is glued in the end of the carbon fibre tube and that's our half inch UNF and the end cap to the shroud. There are a few other things that we did to the shroud off camera. We just quickly drilled this hole here and also if you look just there, there are two breathe holes. What that allows or incentivizes is the air to expand down the shroud and flow out these two holes here. What we'll do now is fit it to the rifle. First thing we'll do is we'll flip the rifle over and then slide this piece here over the end of the barrel. With this part in place we'll secure it using a little grub screw, just an M4 grub screw, like so, and then we'll check that the magazine catch activates freely which it does we'll slide that back then we can go ahead and screw on the front support and 
And then finally, we can slide over the carbon fiber tube. And to secure that, we'll put another M4 grub screw in the back here. And that's it, that's the carbon fiber shroud installed on the rifle. The last thing we'll do is just screw a mod on the end. And that's the carbon fiber shroud made and installed on the rifle. You can see there, finishes it off quite nicely. It's much better than the just standard steel skinny barrel that was on there before. And it just makes the rifle look a little more presentable, as well as quieting it down some. The shroud itself is pretty quiet, although it does benefit from a mod being put on the end. The goal of this shroud wasn't to have a super silent rifle. We did it mainly just to hide the steel barrel beneath. And the extra moderation is just a bonus. That's pretty much going to do it for the R10 now. The rifle's pretty much finished. We have installed the bigger 280cc bottle on the end of it and obviously with the larger bottle we are getting a few extra shots now from a 232 bar fill which is this rifle's maximum fill pressure we're getting around 300 shots from the rifle and if you haven't seen our previous video this rifle is running a longer barrel than standard and also a few tuning parts fitted into the internals of the rifle we're running a lightened hammer and an FAC spring and that's keeping the rifle nice and efficient at sub 12 foot pounds. But that's going to about do it for this video guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one.